what is going on guys welcome back to another video uh, and as promised in this one we will implement picks to picks paper uh, in PyTorch from scratch so uh, I'm just gonna do sort of a quick summary of the paper um, for those of you who haven't watched my paper walkthrough uh, I highly recommend you do that if you want more details of the actual sort of the paper itself but I guess sort of what you need to know the most important part is that pix to pix was basically this paper that could take um, some... So what it can do is that you have some different examples here. But let's just focus on this one, for example. You have some satellite image, and then you, um, with pix to pix you're able to transfer it uh, to, some, to, some, uh, to some map, some Google map image of that one. And then it can also do other cool stuff, like, like right here, it can do coloring of images and stuff like that. So... So, you know, the, um, the, the, the obvious approach is that you can just use some convolutional neural network for this uh, because it's, you know, it's uh, supervised in that way. But I guess um, when they tried that, they came to a problem, which is that hand engineering the loss function, so using something like mean squared error uh, or L1 loss or something like that, it doesn't work too well. So what they did is that they basically thought about it and they came to the conclusion that it would be nice to have a loss function that basically is um, basically you tell it you know create uh, images uh, I guess that are indistinguishable how do you spell indistinguish All right, so basically that you create images that are indistinguishable from your reality, right? If that is our loss function, uh, then it's pretty pretty good. <laughs> so basically that leads us to GANs, right? Because that is what GANs do. Uh, you don't need to specify a loss function. It's basically that right there. So that is the loss function. So that leads us to GANs. So the architecture that they used, um, the generator of the GAN is very much inspired by UNet. You know, you have this input image here, and then you um, do some convolutional layers. You then downsample with these red arrows until you get some point at the bottom, and then you uh, do the opposite. So you do a transpose convolution or upsample it, and then you have these skip connections uh, in the middle right there. So the entire idea, and I'm going through this quickly because I went through it in more detail in the walkthrough. But basically, the idea is that we learn uh, what is in the image on the downward part, and then in the upward part, we learn basically what is in the image. Uh, where with these, uh, you know, these skip connection right here help a lot with uh, sort of capturing that information. So the generator doesn't look exactly like this. This is unit. Um, the one we're going to be doing is a little bit differently, but I think it's uh, we'll get there when we actually get to the code. So and then for the discriminator, it's basically just a couple of com layers. So, you know, you you have your image, you send that through some CNN layers. Uh, it's uh, four com layers in this case. And then you get uh, some output. You know, normally with GANs, you get some zero or one scalar output if it's fake uh, or if it's real. So specifically, you know, in this case, it's called patch GAN. And why it's called that is because the output if we specify the shape is going to be n by uh, 1 by uh, or and then to be very specific in this case it's going to be 30 by 30 uh, and this is assuming 280 or 256 squared input all right so assuming 256 squared input image you're going to get a 30 by 30 as output so, you know, this is a little bit different than, I guess, normal GANs, right? So the idea is that you get some, some output that's uh, on a grid. So in this case, you have 30 by 30, but let's maybe just draw a uh, 3 by uh, 3 by 3 grid, where sort of each value right here is between 0 or 1, indicating if it's a, if it's a fake, so if this particular uh, patch is fake or not. And so the idea is that that specific value, right, if we just focus on a single one, then it's kind of um, responsible for looking at sort of a, a particular patch of the image, original image, right? So we might consider, I'm drawing over what I did here pre previously, but, you know, 
we have some input image and then basically that scalar value is responsible for looking at a um, a larger patch in the original image and so specifically uh, it's responsible for looking at a 70 by 70 patch uh, that's what that's what we're going to build anyways and uh, so I guess how you would con uh, calculate that or, or come to that conclusion that it's uh, 70 by 70 patch that it, it actually sees is that you basically calculate the receptive field uh, that the that the, that single scalar value is able to see in the original image. So you basically you know you backtrack in seeing uh, well what was the kernel size that that worked on the last last uh, sort of feature map? Well, it was a four by four kernel, so you know maybe it was a four by four feature map, and then you sort of walk through all of the conv layers and you get to that conclusion. So these images are taken from sort of my model and what it produced. So just showing you that you know it can do something reasonable, uh, where we have uh, the input right at the left, uh, and these are the targets, and then on the right we have the uh, the generated. So it's obvious to see that these are not perfect, right? Because you can see some some weird stuff. For example, there's some green stuff there which shouldn't be there. Uh, this is also not perfectly shaped. And then you have sort of some issues at for this one as well, but you know all in all it's a pretty good um, it's pretty good, and even if we you know look at the original ones in the in the paper, there are going to be some stuff that doesn't make sense. And then again, I think that the examples they they show are pretty uh, cherry picked to be you know very good ones, and yeah that that is also what I'm doing here, right? These are also cherry picked. There are cases where it looks, you know, pretty bad, uh, but in general, they actually do look pretty good. So, and then we have some more examples here. And uh, yeah, I guess this is a little bit confusing. So, you know, this is the input for the top one. Uh, this is the generated one. Uh, this is the target one. And then we have the opposite for the bottom one. So, so this is the generated one, and then this is the target, I guess. Uh, it's pretty easy to see, but yeah, so that you can see it on this one right there, and you can see it on that one. So, you know, there are some some uh, weird stuff going on, and it's not perfect, And uh, but yeah, in general, it's pretty good. And then another example I tried it on is uh, sort of a coloring anime. So, you know, on the bottom here, we have the input, and then we have uh, the generated ones on the top. So... This is what we send in to pix to pix and then this is what we get as output. And uh, these examples are cherry picked, so these are sort of the as, as good as it gets uh, for the output. Uh, in many cases, the coloring is a little bit weird. I think you can also get it to work a little bit better if you just sort of uh, train for a little bit longer, perhaps. I didn't focus on this too much, I sort of spent most of the focus on getting this stuff to work because that is something you can actually compare to the original paper. But yeah, and then you sort of have the uh, the target ones right on the top here. These are the target ones. These are the generated ones. So that's what generated and that's the target. And uh, yeah, the target ones definitely look a bit better. All right, so that was a quick uh, sort of introduction summary of pix to pix um, Watch the paper review if you want more details. And then now we're gonna try to implement this. So to implement pix to pix uh, my idea is that We'll go through how to implement the model. So we'll do, I guess, the discriminator first, then we'll do the generator. Uh, then we'll do the data set loading. So specifically, uh, the data set looks like this, where we have a train set and a validation set. And then uh, the data set looks something like this, where we have the input on the left and the target on the right. And there's going to be a link in the description of this video uh, where you can download it if you want to uh, code along and get sort of do, do it um, by yourself as well. So I guess uh, we'll just get started. So we'll start with the uh, discriminator model. So I guess we can do discriminator model. And what we'll do afterwards is then we'll do the generator model. We will then create a uh, data set file. Uh, data set loading of that we just saw and then we'll do a train file and I guess we'll also add some other stuff like saving and loading the model and stuff like that but uh, we'll do that later on so the thing we want to um, you know these are sort of the main components so to for the uh, discriminator model 
uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to import torch uh, and then we're going to import torch.nn as nn. So then we'll create our class uh, and uh, what we'll start with is just a CNN block. So, you know, this is not going to be anything uh, very difficult. We're just going to send in some in channels. So, and then some out channels and then also some stride. So that's for the uh, convolutional layer. First, we need to obviously call super on that. Um, so after we're calling super, uh, super uh, we're going to do basically a conv batch norm and then leaky relu. All right, so now we basically want to create um, a block. So the thing we're going to do is just self.conv is nn.sequential. And here we're going to do a conv 2 d And sort of the structure that they do is that they use nn.conv 2 d to, to d and then they use uh, batch norm. Uh, and then they use leaky relu. And uh, in the discriminator, they always use leaky relu. I guess that's similar to um, to other architectures like DC GAN and stuff as well. So I guess it's kind of standard. But so we basically send in out channels uh, and then out in channels to out channels. Uh, they use a kernel size of four. They use a stride of normally two uh, to downsample. Uh, but there's a uh, one, uh, I guess, a case that it doesn't apply to so I'll show that later on but just know that this is basically going to be two in all of the cases um, and so we can perhaps specify this to be two as default and then uh, bias will set to false because we're using batch a uh, batch 2d and then another thing they, they specify is that they wa want the padding mode to be reflect and the reason for that is that it, it supposedly um, produced artifacts so uh, that's what, what we're going to use so then for the forward we're going to have our input x and then we'll just return self.conv of x so I, you know nothing going on here really but this is all we're going to need for the discriminator so let's just create it so class discriminator um, we're going to do an init and in the init we're going to send in some in channels which we're going to specify uh, to be three as default because you normally have RGB. Then we'll send in some features and we'll do, uh, this is what they use in the paper. So first they take the in channels, they send that to 64, then they take 64 to 128 and then 256 and then lastly 512. So they're only using this CNN block four times. And basically uh, we're gonna have, I guess, um, so yeah, basically we're going to send in 256 input. After those com layers, we're going to get a 30 by 30 output. But more on that later. So then what we got to do is super similar as we did up uh, over there. Then uh, basically we're going to... Um, all right, I just noticed one thing that I didn't explain. So uh, one thing is that these are what, what we're going to be using basically for our CNN block. But then they make sort of an, ex an exception to that. So they create an initial uh, block. So the initial block is going to be an, an NN sequential. And then inside this one, um, we're going to create a COM2D and then just leak your ELU. So there's not going to be a batch norm in the initial block. That's just what they specified in the paper. Um, you know, uh, I don't know exactly how it's going to impact if you add a batch norm here. So just use a, a you know, a... Uh, a com block here. It's kind of dif difficult to tell exactly what details are, are important or not. So we're going to do two in channels and then um, in fact we're going to do in channels times two to features of zero. And the I'll, I'll explain that. So the kernel size first is uh, just going to be uh, four. Stride is going to be two and then padding is going to be one. Padding is going to be Padding is going to be one, and then the padding mode is going to be reflect, and then we'll just have a leaky relu again. So the reason why they use uh, in channels times two is that I guess in contrast to to normal GANs where you just send in an image and it's going to output zero or one. In this case, we also send in the um, we send in the satellite image X, and then we send in uh, Y uh, as well, and then we sort of uh, sort of concatenate these along the channels. And then that's what we send in. So it gets the input image and it also gets the output image. And then based on that, it says if the patch of that specific region is uh, 
is uh, fake or real. So now uh, we can use uh, the, that list that we created. So basically, we're going to create some layers. Uh, and the in channels is now going to be uh, features of zero. So we're just going to iterate through that. So for feature in features, and we're going to skip the first one, because that was in the initial block right there. So we're going to go through for feature in features, and then we're going to uh, layers dot append basically one of those CNM blocks. So it's going to be in channels to feature. And uh, what they specified in the paper is that they used a stride of two on all of these three, except for this last 512 one. So basically, uh, I'm going to do this a little bit ugly, but I'm going to do stride equals um, uh, so basically stride equals one if feature uh, equals features of minus one else uh, two so that is the sort of the only thing we're gonna do there um, because in the last one 512 one uh, we're gonna do a stride of one and then uh, we're gonna do in channels equals to feature so then we've added all of that stuff to um, to layers and uh, basically to create sort of a sequential of that, we're going to do self.model uh, is and then sequential of uh, asterisks and then layers. So I'm not exactly sure how to explain this. This is just sort of uh, Python, I guess. But so in this way, we get sort of a unpack all of this stuff we've added to the list and we um, put that in into uh, an NN sequential. So for the forward part, uh, right, uh, we're not going to just get X as input, we're also going to get some um, Y, right, either a Y fake or a Y real. And that is sort of the job of the discriminator to decide of those. So we're going to uh, first concatenate X and Y along the first dimension. So dimension equals one, and that is along the channels. Then we're go going to basically uh, send it through the initial thing right there. So we're going to do x is self initial, and then we'll do x is self dot model of x. And I guess we can just return it right there. So return self dot model of x. And that is pretty much it. That's it for the discriminator. Pretty simple, I know. Um, but you know, let's just and this is something you should always do, in my opinion. Uh, you should just create a test case. So. So you know the test case is just going to be torch at random of um, let's say one example, um, and uh, we'll have three channels. We'll have two fifty six, two fifty six input, and then we'll have a similar one for y. Then you know we'll just initialize our model the discriminator, and um, we'll do predictions is model of x comma y, and then just print preds dot shape, and in, this is a pretty efficient way to. Um, and make sure that you don't have any errors. Uh, so if name equals main, then we'll uh, run the test. So in my opinion, you should always have this sort of at the bottom when you create a model. And as you can see, it didn't work, right? Right. And the reason it doesn't work is that we're also going to need to append a s additional stuff. So, you know, we can't just output 512. We need to output uh, sort of a, for each in the in this grid, we need to output a single value between 0 and 1. So we need an, another com layer um, to just be an and then com 2D with in channels, um, you know, which is what we set right here. So we're going to do in channels to a single uh, feature, uh, sort of, uh, what is it called? Single um, channel, and then we'll do a kernel size of four, stride of one, and then padding padding of one, and then we'll do padding mode equals reflect. And now it should hopefully be the correct size. All right, so when we run this, we get now a uh, single channel with two, 26 by 26. And I just, I think I just miss, uh, I mistakenly said 30 by 30, um, I, sort of in the introduction of this video. It's going to be 26 by 26, and then I'm unsure if that is exactly 70 by 70 patch can, because I realize now, I just went through the paper quickly, is that they, um, I guess they sort of use different um, input shapes depending on the data set and stuff. So. So what they did for some specific data set is that they used a 286 by 286 input 
and in that way they got a 30 by 30 and that corresponds to using a 70 by 70 or sort of seeing a 70 by 70 patch in the original image but you know i don't think this matters too much so you know obviously it works we're just going to have uh, a little bit of a different uh, output right there all right so to move on with the uh with the generator i guess this is going to be uh similar to unit for those of you who watched that one just going to be a little bit differently uh and i'll say exactly what's different uh, when we get there but so for we're just going to create a block first and i guess yeah so this is going to be similar to the cnn block and uh all right then we're going to do in it and basically we're going to send in first the in channels then out channels um we're gonna specify either if we oh wait import tour set and then as and then i was like why am i getting this uh, red stuff all right so you know we send in the in channels we send in the out channels uh and then we specify uh down so down is going to be i'm going to set it to default as true but this is basically if we're in the encoder right the downward part of unit or if we're in the decoder the upward part of unit uh, then we're also going to specify an activation. So they use so in picks to picks. I think in the uh, in the encoder part they used um, leaky ReLU, and then in the decoder they use ReLU. Or it might have been the opposite, but they they sort of used uh, one for the encoder and then one for the decoder. We're just going to set it as default to ReLU, and then in some cases they also used dropout. So we're going to set that to false as default, but we're going to send it in as a as an argument. So then we're going to do uh, super of init. And uh, what we want to start with is basically we're going to create a conv, which is going to be an NN sequential. And uh, we're just going to specify NN conv 2D first with in channels, out channels. Again, kernel size 4, stride 2, uh, padding 1, bias equals false because we're going to use batch norm. Padding mode is going to be uh, reflect. And then we're, go we're going to do that if it's a downward part, right? Because if the, we're in the encoder, then we want a down sample. And uh, we're going to do that in a single, in every single one of those comb layers. So it's always going to be a stride of two. Uh, so that is differently, right, than uh, unit. Because unit originally had a bunch of comb layers and then down and then comb layers, then down. But now we're doing sort of a single comb and that is down sampling also with the stride of two. Uh, but if it's not down, right, then we're going up. So it's in the encoder. Then we're going to use a transpose 2D. Similar thing. We're going to send in in channels, out channels. Um, and um, yeah, so we're going to send in out channels. We're going to send in 4, 2, 1. Bias equals false. And then uh, batch norm 2D of out channels. And then we're going to do NN relu. Uh, uh, if activation equals relu, um, otherwise we're gonna use leaky relu. So those are the only ones you're gonna be able to. We're gonna send in just those two. So in the forward part, right? In the forward, we're gonna get some x, and we're just gonna do x self dot conv of x. Um, and I guess one other thing is that we want to use dropout in some cases. So let's just use uh, self use dropout is use dropout. And then self dot dropout equals and then dot dropout of 0.5. So that's what they specified in the paper. So we'll return self dot dropout of x if self dot use dropout. Um, otherwise, we'll just return x. And specifically, they used 0.5 dropout on the uh, first three layers in the uh, in the upper part of unit. So you know we'll get to that later on. But what we'll do now, and uh, so we'll do class generator um, inherit from NN module. We'll create our init. And all we will send into this one is in channels, which we'll set to default to three. And we'll set features to 64. And then we'll do a super uh, init. So basically, um, I tried making this implementation a little bit cleaner and using. I guess similar to what we did in discriminating using this uh, list of features and stuff like that. But uh, I don't know, I just, it just got a little bit complicated when it didn't need to. So I tried to make this as simple and um, as possible. But when doing it as simple as possible, uh, I also need to copy paste uh, code, which makes it looks, I guess, not so compact. But 
hopefully you will be able to follow this much easier so basically uh, what they did is that we'll use an initial down so uh, similar to the discriminator we won't use batch norm on the first one so here here uh, we'll just specify in channels to features 421 um, padding mode to be reflect and also by the way if you're wondering why didn't we use uh, padding mode reflect on the comb transpose uh, that's because you you can't so for that one we're just gonna we're just gonna use one uh, so if you know if you uh, try to send this in it's PyTorch is gonna give you an error so then we'll do uh, leak URL and we'll do a slope of 0.2 so the only reason why we're doing that is because we um, don't want to use a batch norm um, for some reason in the initial layer all right so moving on we're going to do self down of one is going to be block of features to features times two we're going to specify down equals true activation is uh, leaky and then use dropout we're going to do false i guess we don't need to do that one but let's just do it and what i said about copying code we're just going to do that for a bunch of bunch of times i guess I guess that is pretty good, right? So then we'll um, uh, do it like this. So we'll put it up here, and then this is going to be down two, down three, down four, down five, six, seven, eight. Uh, and uh, now I did too many, so we're just going to do use two down six. And uh, all we're going to do here is this is going to be times two, two times four, times four. Two times eight you get the point I'll fill in the rest or actually uh, I just realized that now we're just gonna do uh, feature eight to feature eight uh, so that's all we're gonna do and now I'll fill in the rest all right so now we have those uh, and you can essentially imagine that you know this is gonna be 128 uh, this is gonna be 64 30 32 um, and then 16 uh, 8 and then 4 wait is that correct no sorry we, um so basically this is the initial first right so all of these are incorrect it's going to be uh two at the bottom so let's just i guess change all of these so it's going to be you know 128 after this one then it's going to be 64 32 16 8 4 and 2 then we're going to use another but we're going to call this the bottleneck and this is not going to be a block it's just going to be an in sequential of nncom 2 d of um, features times eight to features times eight four two one and then i guess we also need to specify padding mode to be reflect i actually hadn't done that before so yeah i, I guess it doesn't matter too much but here we're also going to do and then uh instead of leaky relu we're going to start using relu here so we're going to do that then now for the upward part we're going to do up one is block of features times eight so actually just before we move on so this is going to be one by one right and that is also different from from unit i think in unit at the bottom part it was uh 30 by 30 perhaps something like that but now it's going to be one by one at the bottom so then for the upward part the uh, decoder part we're going to specify down to be false which means it's going to use a transpose convolution on the way up and then activation we're going to specify relu use dropout to be uh, true and we're going to do that on the first three upward part but let me just copy paste this a bunch of times that is probably too many uh, we're going to need seven of them so two three four five six seven all right and you might be wondering like why did i do this um, it's because we're going to uh, concatenate similarly to unit in the forward part so um that is, um, I, it just got complicated using loops. Uh, even though this looks a little bit weird, I, I found it to be a little bit uh, easier anyways. So we're going to use use dropout for those, but then we're going to use false for the rest. So all of these are going to be false. And then uh, we're going to use relu on all of them. But, and down, down are going to be, and then down is going to be false on all of them but we need to change the um, the features here so basically um, the first up here is gonna just take what's what uh, going from the uh, bottleneck and then uh, up up sample it but the other ones are gonna get some concatenation right from the um, 
from what we did in the downward part. So all of these are going to be uh, down times 2, basically because we're going to concatenate um, from downward part. And then I guess in up 6 is where we're going to change the number of features to 4 and then uh, 2 right there. So here we're going to change this to 4, we're going to change this to 2, and then we're going to change this to uh, features times 2. And then, no, wait a second. So this last one isn't just going to be two features, right? And then we'll have a final up. And this final up is going to basically um, just do a, um, a last com transpose. So com transpose 2D of uh, this features times 2. But because again, we're going to concatenate to in channels, right? So it's going to generate the uh, as it was in originally. Uh, kernel size is 4, stride is uh, 2. Stride is two, and then padding is um, is one, and then afterwards we're gonna use and then ten h. So the reason why we use ten h is because we want each pixel value to be between uh, minus one and one. Um, I guess if you were normalizing to be between zero, zero or one, you could use a sigmoid here, but this is what they did uh, in the original paper. So that's it for generating all that stuff and. We're going to now do the uh, forward part. So we're going to send in some, some value x. And uh, we're going to do d1 is self.initial down of x. And then we're going to do d2 is self.down1 of uh, d1. So then we're just going to copy paste that a bunch of times. And we're going to do d3, d4, d5, d6, d7. And I guess we won't have a d8. No, so we'll have the bottleneck right there. Now we need to change all of these stuff. So it's going to be D2, D3, D4, D5, D6. And then here it's going to be bottleneck of D7. Then for the upward, up1, we're going to do self.up1 of bottleneck. And now is when we're going to start using those. Wait a second. This should be down2, down3, down4, down5, down6. So, okay, now in the upper part is when we're also going to start concatenating stuff, right? Uh, concatenating stuff. So up two is self dot up two of uh, torch cat of uh, let's see. So this is um, sort of um, we need to take the previous one right. So the output from the previous one, and then we're gonna use what was uh, the last one in the uh, encoder. That's what we're gonna. That is what we we're going to concatenate um, with the. Um, uh, with this one, right? So uh, if you look at the uh, at the image of unit, this makes total total sense. So the the first one is is uh, going to be the same shape as the last one in the upward part. So the first in in the encoder is going to be the same shape as the last in the upward part. And uh, yeah, that's just how I view it. So we're gonna concatenate it here, up one and d seven. We're going to concatenate it along dimension one for the channels. And that is pretty much it. So let's copy paste this a bunch of times. Up three, up four, five, six, seven. Then up three, four, five, six, seven. And here we're going to do uh, up two, up three, up four, up five, up six. And then we're going to do the six, the five, the f wait, the six, the five, the four, the three, the two. And then uh, we're going to do the final one. So self final up of torch.cat of uh, up seven and then D1 and then uh, dimension one, right? So yeah, if you're confused over this, just look at the image um, of unit. And this is, you know, basically exactly like that. The only difference is that we're using a single conv layer than down sampling. So we're doing a bunch of more down sampling than unit. Um, but yeah, it, it's the same idea. So let me just copy paste in a test case of this just to make sure that it works. So then this is what we do. We generate an example, just random values. We uh, initialize the generator. We run the example through the model. And then we'll just print the, print the shape, shapes. So uh, just a small test for you. What should the output shape be? Well, it should be exactly as the original one, right? Because we should only transfer the pixel values of that one to some output. So 
If that was your answer, I'm pretty happy. So now that we're done with those two, uh, the generator and the discriminator, uh, we are now going to do uh, the data set and then we'll do the training part. So, um, yeah, there's really nothing, you know, I guess difficult here, but I'll go through it anyways, just to make sure that everything is, um, you know, just to make sure that, you know, the, the tutorial is complete. So there's no stuff missing. Um, but yeah, if you watch my previous video, this is going to be pretty simple. We're going to from pill import image. Uh, we're going to import NumPy as NP import OS. Um, I guess, yeah, I guess that's it. So then we'll do class. Let's call it map data set because we're going to use those uh, satellite images to Google map image. Uh, we'll inherit from, yeah, so we need to do it from utils.data uh, import data set. So we're going to inherit from the data set here and then uh, in it. And the only thing we're going to send in here is the root directory. So, uh, you know, we have, again, the, the data structure that we have data, we have maps, and then we have this uh, train, right? So an image looks like this. And uh, basically, we're going to send in that root directory. So we'll just do self that root directory is root directory. And um, we'll, we'll list all of the files in that one. So what is good about this, right, is that the target is just next to the original. So we just need to load this and then split it by half. And then those gets uh, to be the input and the target. So basically, we're going to do list files is OS dot uh, list directory of uh, what's in that root directory, right? So basically, we send in the root directory, which is going to be this map and then train um, or val, depending on, you know, if it's the val data set or the train. Then we'll list all of the files in there. And maybe we can do list files just to make sure it looks correct. Then we'll do the length of the data set, which is just going to be the length of um, self.list files. Then for, I guess, the get item. Oh, get in. I've never seen that one. wonder what that does. Uh, but get item. And here we'll just get an index. So um, we'll, we'll take in, uh, we'll take the image file by doing self.list files. And then we'll do uh, the index that we'll get. We'll do the image path is uh, ospath.join of self.root directory. And then the image file. I guess this should more be the image path perhaps. Yeah, you get the idea, the image file. Then we'll do image is np array of uh, image dot open of image path. Oh, sorry, um, I'm feeling sleepy. <laughs> so anyways, right, the image file will get from the uh, list files. And then the image path um, is what we get when we add the root directory and the image file. Wow, I'm feeling kind of tired right there. <laughs> So uh, then we'll open the image with um, image.open. We'll convert it to an M N uh, NumPy array. And the reason why we're doing that is because we're going to use albumentations for our um, for our augmentations, right? So this, if we were to use TorchVision, um, it's going to be a little bit tricky if we were to use some augmentations on this original image. So maybe if we were to flip it, uh, we need to make sure that we also flip uh, the target image. Um, similarly, if we do other stuff. So for that, I just find albumentations to be uh, much easier. So I'll kind of show you using albumentations and hopefully you have watched my tutorial on that. But I think you'll you'll still be able to follow this even if you haven't watched that. So the input image anyways is going to be image of um, all the, um, what is this? I guess all of the examples. No. This is um, all of the channels, right? So we're only reading a single example in the get item. So these are all the channels. Then we'll do up to 600 because, um, well, I didn't tell you this, but the image here is uh, 600 uh, by 600. So if we um, sort of put both of them side by side, it's going to be 1,200 in width. So we'll just take, uh, take up to 600 uh, for the input image and then all of the, uh, the height. And then we'll do pretty much the same uh, same thing for the target image. So I guess the target image is going to be image, but then from 600 instead. So then uh, what we'll do is uh, I guess we're gonna. Hmm. All right. So I'll, I'll I won't do this one. I'll just copy paste it over and show you what it looks like. 
All right, so I copy pasted over a config file, and basically why I did that is um, because it's not really that fun to write all this stuff. So we're gonna use torch. We're gonna uh, we're gonna import torch. I'll be mutations. Uh, yeah. So these are just standard stuff. We're gonna use uh, CUDA learning rate two e minus four, same as paper. Uh, we're gonna use a batch size of sixteen. I think actually in the paper they use a batch size of one, but I just feel bad not using the VRAM. Um, and in fact. Here I'm only using a portion of the VRAM anyways, but I'm gonna put a batch size of 16 just because, I don't know, it makes sense. Number workers to two, image size 256, yeah. And then I guess, wait a second. So we don't need this. Should probably done this beforehand, huh? But we don't need that. Uh, 500 epochs, load model, we're gonna set to false in the beginning because we don't have a model and then uh, checkpoint for the discriminator and the generator. Right, so this is what I want to show you. So uh, we'll do both transforms. We'll just resize both of them to 256. Uh, then we'll do additional targets. We'll do image zero and then, um, yeah. So basically that's because we're gonna send in the mask as well. So we're gonna, we wanna perform the same uh, augmentations on that. So the reason for that is, let's say we add a horizontal flip. Uh, let's say probability of 0.5. So, now what's going to happen is that it's going to also apply it to this additional target that we send in and i'll show you exactly how we send that in uh, but then after we've done sort of both transformations we might want to do only one for the input for example so you know um, i guess an example of this could be something like collegiator maybe you want to use a collegiator in 10 percent of the cases uh, and then you want to normalize and convert it to a tensor but you might not want to do that on the um, sort of the mask or yeah the, uh, the the target. So here we'll just normalize and do two tensor. So that's it. That's what we use in the config file. You know nothing really important there. So if we go back to the data set, uh, we'll do augmentations equals um, config dot both. We need to import config as well. So import config. And then we'll do config dot both transform. Here we'll send in image is input image, and then we'll do image zero is target image, and that's because we specified this additional target and we wrote uh, image zero that uh, uh, in that config file. So you know uh, specifically this, right? So then uh, what we'll also do is we'll get the input image and the target image by doing augmentations of uh, image and then augmentations of image zero. So this is you know what you do with augment uh, with augmentations. Then the input image is going to be config dot transform only input uh, of image equals input image, and then we'll. Um, from image and pretty much we're going to do the same thing for the target so this is going to be target image then we'll do uh let's see target image of image then we'll return the input image and the target image right so it looks pretty simple when we've done it right we just uh do all the list directories uh we do the length we do the get item and uh, we do that by loading the specific one with uh, pill. Then we split it by half. And then we do this augmentation using augmentations. And, you know, to be honest, I don't think even you need to do this. But, you know, I, it, uh, it feels better to do it. So that's why I added it to make it a little bit more uh, general. So, you know, uh, normally I would test it right here to make sure that it works. But I'm pretty confident that this works. Um, so I'll just do it like this. And uh, one other thing also that I added is this uh, utils file. I didn't want to, um, I guess, go through this one. So basically, I just made a util file to save some examples um, using Torch Vision save image. So basically, we're just going to make sure that we get something that looks, you know, all right. Um, and then save checkpoint and load checkpoint. And that is all that's in the utils file. So, you know, nothing really special there. I just didn't feel like um, writing it. So now we'll do the uh, the train file. So this is the last thing that we'll do. And then we are done. So I guess we'll train it also. But um, uh, and yeah, so we'll do all of the imports. And I'm actually going to copy paste in all of the imports. 
So copy paste. Um, and basically what we're going to use is torch. Uh, we're going to use from utils that I just showed you. Uh, save low checkpoint and then save some examples. Torch.nn, torch.optim, config, uh, data set, the one we created. Generator model, discriminator model, um, data loader, TQDM for a progress bar. And then torch vision, uh, save image. I guess we don't need that one because we have the, that in the utils. All right, so what we're going to do is uh, let me just do sort of a default layout. We're going to do a train function, uh, and then we're going to do a main function. And I guess this is sort of, if you watch my previous videos, this is always how I structure my train function. Um, and then we're going to do if name equals main, we'll run the main function. And uh, if you're curious, what did uh, double equals? So if you're curious as to why I do it this way, uh, the reason why I always do if name equals main and then do run the main one is because um, if you use num workers on Windows, you can run into some issues uh, if you don't have that. And I think, you know, every time I don't do it, I'll get an error. So it's pretty much all the time. So, you know, in the uh, main file, we'll first create the discriminator. So discriminator uh, in channels three, and then we're going to do dot two config dot device. Then we're going to do the same thing for the generator. So generator. Um, we're going to initialize the, screen, uh, the optimizer, which is going to be Adam. So we're going to do discriminator.parameters uh, learning rate equals config.learning rate. Uh, then we'll do betas is uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.999. So um, I guess this is what they specified in the paper, but I guess why they specify this. So this is the standard value for um, the value for Adam. And this is uh, a little bit differently. I think this standard is 0.9. And uh, this is sort of a common thing in GANs is that they play around with this beta one term, which uh, corresponds to the uh, momentum term of Adam. So I guess they just want a little bit less momentum, I guess. I haven't tried using this uh, with a greater one, but, and uh, again, it's difficult to know exactly which parameters are important or not, but that is what they use in the paper, so. Let's just use it. Seems like a, a safe thing. So then we'll do the generator and similar thing. I guess here you could um, specify a different learning for the discriminator and the generator, but they didn't do that. They just used 2e minus 4, and they didn't use a learning scheduler or anything like that. Just use 2e minus 4 constant throughout. And I'm just going to make sure that I have space on my computer so that my recording doesn't crash. All right, we're good. So the generator, uh, then we're going to do the uh, the loss, which is BCE. So it's going to be BCE with logit, um, just standard GAN loss. And then we're going to have an L1 loss as well, which is just going to be an, an n.l1 loss. Uh, and if you're curious as to why they didn't use patch GAN, um, or why they didn't use a vGAN GP loss, which is a, you know, a, a better one, I guess, is because it didn't work well with uh, patch GAN. So that's the reason I, I even tried it, but it, it didn't work well. So then we'll do if config uh, load model, then we'll uh, load a checkpoint, which will do config dot checkpoint of the generator, gen up gen, uh, and then config dot learning rate. And we'll send in similar thing for the discriminator. So this is important if you obviously want to train it. Um, so yeah, we'll have that there. Then we'll do the uh, train data set. Uh, we'll do map data set. And the root directory here is going to be data maps train. Um, yeah. Then we'll do a, um, I guess, so we will do the uh, train loader. And that is going to be data loader of train data set. Batch size is config.batch size. Shuffle equals true. And then we'll use num workers is config num workers. Um, what I'll also do is I'll do uh, float 16 training. We don't have to do that, um, but you know I think it's good to do as a default, especially for those of you who don't have that much VRAM. Um, it's going to run faster probably, and it's going to use less VRAM. You're going to get the same result, so why not? Um, and it's pretty simple. So we're going to just do G scalar. I won't explain all of this stuff. Um, yeah, I'll just do this. So 
torch.cuda.amp.gradscaler uh, and we'll need one for the discriminator as well. I'm actually unsure if you need to have two different scalers. Um, just seems like a safe option. So I'll do that and then val dataset is going to be map dataset of our root directory of data maps uh, val. Then we'll do a uh, val loader. So val loader is going to be data loader of val dataset. Batch size will set to one and then shuffle equals false. All right. So now we're going to go through for epoch in range of config.num epochs. Uh, we're basically going to call the train function, which we haven't implemented. That's sort of the last that we'll do. We'll send in the discriminator, uh, the generator, uh, the train loader, uh, the uh, optimizer for the discriminator, optimizer for the generator. We'll send in the L1 loss, the BCE, and then the G scaler and the uh, D scaler. So that is basically for the generator and the discriminator. Um, and then each epoch will also do if config save model um, and just to make sure that it doesn't save every epoch maybe we want to do if epoch modulus 5 equals 0 we'll do save checkpoint of gen opt gen file name equals uh, config dot checkpoint gen so then we'll do the same thing for the discriminator here So this is basically it for the main file. Um, I guess we also want to call uh, save some examples of generator val loader epoch and then folder equals evaluation. So I guess we also need to create that folder here. Uh, so evaluation. So that is just to get some examples uh, printed to us nicely. And uh, I perhaps didn't mention this, but of course this is all going to be on GitHub. So if you don't have this uh, function and stuff, uh, you don't want to write it, then go to GitHub, just copy paste um, the code there. All right, so for the train function, right? And this is the last thing. Uh, we're going to send the discriminator, the generator, op discriminator, op generator, L1 loss, uh, BCE, uh, G scaler, and D scaler. Uh, and the first thing we'll do is we'll specify a loop to be TQDM of loader uh, leave equals true. Uh, and wait a second. So that's going to be the third thing. So we're going to send in the loader right there. Then we'll do for index comma, I guess, XY in enumerate of loop. And uh, we'll do X, Y is X dot two config dot device, Y dot two config dot device. Um, and uh, we're going to do train the discriminator and all of this is going to be you know similar to how we've done in the previous uh, GAN videos so we're just going to do dot torch CUDA amp dot autocast or um, oh yeah so this is just for float 16 but how we actually train this is going to be similar so we're going to do y fake is generator of x uh, the real is going to be the discriminator when we send in x and y, right? That is the output on the on the actual real one. Then for the um, fake one, I guess, we're going to send in uh, y fake. And here we're going to send in y fake dot detach. And I've explained this in previous videos, but basically um, when we train the generator, we can use the same one that we generated here. But if we don't do the dot detach here, we're going to break the computational graph um, uh, when we do optimizer dot step on the discriminator. So you can either do dot detach or when you compute your loss later on, right? So when you do loss dot backward, you can send in retain graph equals uh, true. That is an uh, sort of alternate way of doing it. But so we're going to do defake um, and then we're going to do uh, the real loss is BCE of the real loss, uh, the real, and then towards ones like um, the real. So then we're going to do the same thing for the fake. Uh, so the fake loss is going to be BCE of the fake. And this is going to be zeros, uh, zeros like, and then it's going to be the fake. Then for the actual D loss, um, the real loss, and then the fake 
loss and then divide that by two i guess so you know in the um, i think this it was this paper maybe it was the cycle again but it's the same authors i guess but basically they said that they divided by two to make the discriminator train slower in contrast or relative to the generator and that just didn't make any sense to me right because i think that if you just remove the divided by two here um it's going to be the exact same computational to the gradients right i'm not really sure what the difference is there so yeah not really sure about that actually because you're going to want to minimize so if you minimize i guess 10 times the loss or you know it, we still want to minimize it with respect to the parameter so i guess this dot division by two doesn't make sense but you know I, who cares so then we're going to do discriminator dot zero grad uh d scalar dot scale of d loss and then dot backward uh, and i guess here is where you would do retain graph and then d scalar dot step of op discriminator and then d scalar dot update so then we're going to do train generator uh, we're going to do the same thing basically with torch cuda dot amp dot autocast um, we're going to get d fake which is discriminator of x and y fake then we're going to compute fake loss which is bce of d fake and basically we want to trick the discriminator to believe that these are real ones so we're going to send in torch ones like d fake uh, and additionally to the um, the fake loss what they did in in this paper is that they also computed an l1 loss um also so they did l1 is just i guess yeah l1 this is a little bit confusing perhaps um l1 is just y fake comma y and then times config dot l1 lambda so the l1 lambda they used is 100 uh, which is what i wrote uh over here uh, in the config file after that we'll basically do g loss and the g loss is going to be the g fake loss uh added with the l1 and then uh basically we'll do up gen dot zero grad um and we'll do all of this stuff over here and i'm just gonna copy paste that because i'm lazy so and now i had to do more work anyways so then we gotta do uh g scalar and then g loss and then opt generator i always have to be careful when i copy paste stuff because that's usually how mistakes happen and uh yeah that is it so we'll hopefully everything should just work right um but it never does right and now we're printing some stuff and let's just wait for the error and it actually works that's pretty amazing so i guess let's remove that from the um the data set and let's see so yeah so i basically trained this right previously um i had to train it for i don't know how many epochs maybe 200 something like that uh, maybe longer i'm not really sure you, as you can see it goes pretty quickly uh, and uh i guess so what i um just want to do now is uh, get something that kind of looks good because I don't want to you know sit here for for uh, 200 epochs so I'm just going to train for a little bit and then we'll see what it looks like so I guess in the evaluation stuff here uh, this is what it looks like in the beginning and this is what it looks like then you can see that there are sort of some artifacts here and in the beginning they sort of bother me a lot so I thought something was wrong but if you just train for longer then it magically works um, in fact, you'll actually still get some of the artifacts in some cases, but if you just rerun it, then uh, they don't uh, appear. So I think there's something wrong with batch norm, perhaps, and uh, the the authors of the paper also mentioned this. So, you know, uh, it seems to be a common issue. But um, yeah, so I'll just I don't know. It should probably show up right now. Maybe I need to open up the folder for that so let's bring that over here and then in the uh where is it so evaluation and then here all right so as we can see it doesn't look too good so let's just run it a little bit longer 
All right, so I'm pretty bored of this, but as you can see right here, we're getting something, right? We're getting a row there, we're getting something there, we're getting some grass over here. And uh, if we look at the label, wait, wait a second, that's kind of weird. Right, so yeah, we added the horizontal flip, right? So sometimes you'll get this, which is uh, on the left side, and then I guess sometimes you'll get it on the right side. So that's also, um, I was kind of worried that we got the grass over here, um, but it seems like that's just because we flipped it and this is just uh, label one uh, but you know uh, Who cares you can see that it's starting to work. Um, I just don't don't want to sit here for too long So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy paste over uh, the pre-trained weights and uh, these are also going to be on um, on github if you want uh, to to just try it out uh, so I'm just going to copy paste those over and then we'll do on the config, we'll do a load model is true. And uh, now we should basically be able to run this, right? And uh, remember, so those examples that we saw are on the validation set. Maybe we can also increase the batch size a little bit on the validation set. Not sure where we put that. Yeah, right there. So let's put it to batch size eight and then we'll see uh, what it looks like basically. And uh, also let's remove all of this stuff so we don't have to train for an epoch. And then in the evaluation, now we get a bunch of them, but I guess they're all gonna be the same perhaps. So yeah, basically this is what is generated. And uh, yeah, it looks all right. You can see there's some sort of weird stuff going on on some of them. Uh, but for in general, they look pretty good and you even have these arrows on most of them um, Yeah, that is it um, Hopefully you uh, were able to follow this video uh, Let me know if you have any feedback on things I could improve um, with the explanations and all of that stuff um, So I'm pretty excited now to uh, move forward with the GAN series again So I've made a couple of GAN videos now we've uh, done picks to picks and I'm going to do cycle again as my next video uh, walkthrough of the paper and then implementation similar to this one. And then we'll also do some other GANs like super resolution GAN and uh, style GAN perhaps or and pro GAN as well. All right. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, like the video if you found it useful. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you next in the next video, hopefully.